and I'm going to create a group, call it top vert. If I can type, there we go. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach those to this cylinder. So now I've got this and I'm ready to start animating. So let's go in and animate this guy. Let's do it. Um, we don't need much motion to really kind of show what happens. Whoops. So something like that. And that. And then let's move him back to the beginning. And let's actually bring the time scale up a little bit. So we get a little bit more. In fact, actually, let's slow this down just a little bit. So it happens a little bit more procedurally. There we go. I'll get out of animate mode. And now, when I animate this, when I hit simulate, watch what happens to the cloth. Now, even though these two both have the exact same properties, as far as cloth goes, you'll notice that the bias cut cloth stretched and deformed in a completely different way than this first one, than the original on bias um, piece of cloth. So, you know, if I scrub back here, you'll notice that the cloth stretches pretty dramatically here early on. Even though these things have the exact same properties, I'm getting very different motion out of both of these. And um, another good way to illustrate that, actually, let's go in and apply a material. I'll make it two-sided. Let's grab a checker, and I'm going to make it like an Italian tablecloth. We'll go five by five, and we'll turn it on. Now, you've got, a again, a visual representation of what's going on. And that big virtual piece of fabric that I cut these two panels out of, this one, you can see the pattern, the, the threads that, that make it up run horizontally and vertically, or I should say horizontally and vertically, so I don't confuse anyone. And this one, you can see, was shifted 45 degrees, so the threads run diagonally crisscrossing it. So the dynamics that affect this piece of cloth are going to be different than affect this one, even with the same properties. Now, bias cut cloth tends to be a little bit more uh, springy and stretchy. Um, and uh, in order to control it, you really have to kind of work with the stretch and shear values. Uh, if I take the stretch values and I boost them up quite dramatically, let's erase the simulation and re-simulate. You notice I'm still getting some, some shearing. It's still kind of deforming and stretching, but the actual triangles aren't, um, aren't stretchy they're not as stretchy, but considering I've got shear value, which means the triangles can change shape relative to one another on plane, um, I'm still getting some of that behavior that's a little bit uh, unnerving. And if, you, if you're looking to kind of control that a little bit more, let's go ahead and uh, stop that here real quick. Let's move back. If you want to control it, instead of using the stretch values, let's bring those down, you want to adjust the shear value. So in this case, if we boost the shear value up quite a bit, let's bring this up full screen. Zoom in just a little bit. And hit simulate. You'll notice that the cloth doesn't, doesn't have quite as much spring to it now as it did before. Uh, but it is still far more than the, the normal cloth that you've got. So be aware of that. Um, because you, you can certainly make some very interesting um, effects, especially with uh, uh, garments of, of more uh, detail than something like this. Um, again, if I wanted to, I could turn on self-collisions and basically kind of help myself in terms of creating a decent looking simulation. You'll notice that the stretch here, actually let's stop it right here, you'll notice that the, the way that these pieces of clothing move is pretty dramatically different. This one is creasing all the way from the top down, whereas this one you've got a kind of an interesting stretch until it gets to here, and then it starts to kind of crumple and fold up. So um, the two 
the two methods of building the this kind of cloth is is uh, rather an interesting uh, thing you can play with. Um, as I've shown in another video, when you're building patterns and you're using the references to uh, be able to tailor your clothing, this is one of those things that you might want to consider as well as taking your panels and rotating them to see if you get a different effect. Now, and so you can see here as this thing comes to rest, you know, this cloth looks a little bit more wrinkled. This one looks a little bit less. And when we play it back, you still get nice motion from both. But it is distinctly different, different behavior on both of them. Now that that has been, um, you know, the idea is behind it has been shown. Let's take a look at something a little bit more of a, a practical example for you to uh, work with on this.